Good day, everyone, and, and thank you for uh, joining us today. Uh, my name is Robert. I am the Director of Business Development and Franchise Operations, uh, part of the VIA Franchise Consulting Team uh, based in Ho Chi Minh City, Vietnam. And I will be the host for today's exciting event. Today, we're privileged to be joined by some very distinguished guests from Mathnasium, one of the most recognized brands in math education today. And with more than a, a thousand centers on five continents, they are definitely leaders in this multi-billion dollar industry. And I know a lot of you are in, very interested in hearing some more information about this brand. Now, before uh, I introduce uh, my guests, uh, a few housekeeping points, and then I'd like to take uh, just two minutes to explain what we at VF Franchise Consulting do. So uh, time permitting, uh, we will have a public uh, question and answer session at the end, and we're happy to answer any of your questions that maybe didn't get covered during this uh, webinar, or you please feel free to follow up with me uh, by email after the webinar, and we'll also respond that way. We'll also be sending out some information with a link to this recording after the webinar, uh, so please watch your email for it. Now, at VF Franchise Consulting, uh, we're focused only on the Asian market uh, with our headquarters right here in Vietnam and partner offices uh, in other key countries around the region. And we basically cover territories from the Middle East, uh, India, all the way across to uh, New Zealand, um, Australia, and up to Japan and Korea. And we do a lot of different things. Uh, we provide a franchise training, a wide variety of business consulting and franchise consulting uh, project-based work. But really our two main divisions for our company, uh, number one, we help uh, brands or companies basically prepare all the steps to develop their own franchise system so that they can use that channel to expand their business throughout their own countries or around the region. And our biggest division is our sales and marketing uh, team, which is very active in, fall, in finding qualified franchisees uh, all across the Asia region for our clients, most of which are in the food and beverage or the education industries. So that's kind of what we do. So this afternoon, this morning, depending on where you are, we're pleased to be here uh, to discuss one of our very high potential and exciting brands, Mathnasium. Uh, VF Franchise Consulting Team is happy to be both assisting Mathnasium in their regional expansion and in having one of their key team members uh, with us here today, Mr. Bill Schreiber, the Executive Director of International Development, as well as my two special guests, uh, Hamanshu and Ritika, who are the master franchisees for Mathnasium in Australia. Um, so let's begin with a very short video and then I'll turn it over to Bill. Our schools have amazing math teachers, but with all the demands made on them, how can talented students get the extra challenge and accelerated learning they need, while those who struggle with math get the attention and emotional support they need? Mathnasium has a solution to help any student excel. We begin with a verbal and written assessment that pinpoints each child's unique strengths and weaknesses. Then we customize a learning plan to focus on the specific concepts they need to master. Next, highly trained, caring instructors teach each student face-to-face -face at the perfect pace for them, using a range of teaching modes to ensure true foundational understanding. We're not about rote memorization. The Mathnasium method develops the critical thinking and problem-solving skills they need to succeed. And we make learning math fun, so students truly enjoy coming to Mathnasium. They're part of our family. We even provide test prep for college-bound high schoolers. The results? Students succeed beyond expectations. The Mathnasium method builds confidence, boosts grades, and improves test scores. Because mathematics is so fundamental, 
results extend past the classroom, and last a lifetime, opening doors to new careers and infinite possibilities. Mathnasium makes it easy for parents too, with flexible scheduling and over 1,000 neighborhood learning centers. Each visit includes homework help, taking the stress out of school nights. For over 15 years, we've been trusted by more than a half a million parents. But see it for yourself. Check out our reviews. Learn more about the Mathnasium method and schedule a no-obligation first visit at your neighborhood Mathnasium Learning Center today. Mathnasium, we're changing lives through math. I like that video. It's, it's very clear, really kind of highlights uh, what Mathnasium does. Uh, but without further delay, let me introduce to everybody Mr. Bill Schreiber, uh, who's joining us from the U.S. So good evening, Bill. Um, Bill is the Executive Director of International Development for Mathnasium, and I'll turn it over to you. Thank you. Um, good morning to everybody, or good afternoon, evening here if you're in the United States. Uh, it's actually a pretty nice night. So I'm basically, my name is Bill Schreiber. Um, I live in Phoenix, Arizona, and I am the Executive Director of International Development for Mathnasium. I can tell you that I've been um, in the development industry for over 35 years, of which I spent the majority of it in restaurants, and thus in turn made a decision a little bit over a year ago to take the opportunity to come into the educational sector because I wanted to make a difference in children's lives. So I've had the opportunity to work around the world and have been pretty pleased with the opportunity to see 120 countries and launch brands in various parts of the world. It's been a great, great opportunity in my life uh, to see so many places and impact so many lives. Next slide, please. So Mathnasium, what do we really do? Who are we? Well, we're really about shaping the minds of children with first through 12th grade instruction that helps create leaders of the future. I was really amazed at Mathnasium when I realized the confidence we instilled in children really gave them the opportunity to feel good about where they could go and what they could do further in their lives. At Mathnasium, we help kids understand math by teaching a way that actually makes sense to them. Children who can constantly and consistently attend our learning centers enjoy a transformative learning opportunity and experience that helps them make huge, huge strides in their classroom at their normal school. We were born in the United States, Los Angeles. We were founded in 2002. We started franchising in 2003. And right now we have, as Robert had alluded to, over 1,100 units uh, around the world. Next slide, please. So as you can see here, we educate a whole bunch of different children. We cater to any children from any background because what we want to be able to do is change children's lives through math. And the way we do it is various systems that work, reinforcements, a chance to win really kind of neat prizes and gifts. And all this is done in one learning center where a four to one student teacher ratio enables us to give the children the opportunity to have multiple instructors helping them feel confident in their math abilities and what they're learning. But more importantly, I wanna stress, we take the opportunity and it is a big piece of what we do with our students is understanding where students start out and that's being done by the assessment. The assessment allows us to build a really strategic learning plan for all of our students. Next slide, please. So Mathnasium has been recognized by Entrepreneur, where we're the fastest 500 uh, growing um, franchise in the United States by Forbes, who everybody recognizes around the world, uh, great magazine and the, as a, one of America's best franchises, and then Entrepreneur, top low cost franchise to get into. So along with all these accolades that we've been able to receive, we're really proud of these awards that other companies have recognized us for, where we have the ability to one, be proud of who we are and what we do, but more importantly, change children's lives through math. Next slide, please. This is one of our centers. It's one of our new one. We call it a learning center. 
This is a corner unit, much bigger than what we would expect to see on an international basis. But what we wanted, I wanted everybody to see is get an idea of what conceptually our buildings and signage and everything can look like. It really stands out and it lets parents know and the public know exactly who we are. We can achieve the same kind of look at any particular building that you may, um, if you become a franchisee, you would have with us. Next slide, please. So Mathnasium, again, as we've talked about, our whole model, what our company lives by, is changing lives through math. That's what we do. And we're very proud of what all of our employees and all of our centers do around the world to help children change their lives so that as they grow and they get older, they become more confident, but more importantly, math no longer scares them. They actually look forward to being able to, to conquer math and use it to help them achieve the goals and dreams that they're looking for. Next, please. So to sum it all up, we're a math learning center. We have a proprietary way of teaching math, which with children, absolutely respond to. And I would love to discuss the opportunity on how this could work in your particular country. So right now we're gonna turn it back over to Robert and introduce our master franchisee in Australia. Thank you. Felix has been in the textile industry and for myself in the past 10 years or so, I've been in the education sector as well, doing management and marketing of it. From a franchisee, it's the support and obviously the branding has been consistent throughout and the fact that the longevity of it, it's a proven model. Um, on top of that, it's one of the top 150 franchises to buy worldwide. So you can't actually lie about something like that. And we believe in the system and the fact that the head office here has been very, very transparent with everything. They've held our hands from the beginning to right now from securing the premises, looking at fit outs, talking to us about the curriculum and just, you know, giving us ideas to even save costs. It's a membership model. It's relatively new in Australia, but that helps us gauge your revenue. So any recurring revenue really helps in business terms. We don't want to have children think that math is a scary subject. And at the end of the day, math can be fun. I mean, look at what we have around here. It is actually fun. I wish that that's how we were taught. Obviously in every suburb, there are a lot of tutoring centers, but because this is more specific to math and it is also a drop-in model, I think parents would love that. Being a parent myself, not having to schedule my days and just thinking, oh, today I think I can drop the kids off and not worrying about that. It's really fantastic. We've been personally going through the curriculum. It is mind-blowing. It, it makes you rewrite your whole brain. But once you get it, you see that it's quick. So it's effective, it's quick, and they do not have one of the teachers standing at the front with a blackboard and just, you know, talking to the kids. It's a ratio of one to four. That's almost unheard of. And if it's a quiet time, it's almost one-on-one. -on -one. So it is essentially, if you're looking at it from a customer perspective, it's a really good, affordable, course to attend. I also like that video. So as um, I mentioned earlier, uh, we're pleased to welcome uh, two of our master franchisees for Mathnasium. Um, that is, that video was talking a little bit about it, things from a different perspective. Uh, from that of a franchisee instead of uh, from a franchisor. So now I'm pleased to introduce to you Mr. Hamanshu and Ms. Ratika, the master franchisees from Australia. Uh, hand it over to you guys. Hi, Robert. Thank you so much. Um, hi, everyone. Good afternoon. Good morning. Good evening, depending on where you are. I'm here, Hamanshu Gupta, and with me is my partner and wife, Ratika. We both are master franchisers for Mathnasium in Australia. So I'll have Ratika first introduce herself, then I'll go. Hi everyone, good afternoon. Myself is Ratika. I have done my bachelor's in biology and I have a master's degree in business administration. So my role in Mathnasium is 
mainly into center and provides support and train franchising. Hi, and uh, hi, Iman Shukupta. I have a bachelor's in engineering and so is a master's. I also have, I work for American Express. Uh, I'm the chief cadet officer for them and across multiple countries in the past, New York, Singapore, India, and more recently, Sydney, obviously. Uh, my role at Mathnesium is on the business development side, but also providing uh, franchise sales and support. If you go to the next slide, what we'll do is just start by uh, providing some context about the market itself. So if you go to the next slide. Yeah, so uh, below is an Australia snapshot. So, you know, Australia is a fairly large uh, uh, country when it comes to uh, monetary terms. Uh, the GDP is almost $2 trillion. It's a fairly affluent society with a weekly wage of about just under $2,000. It's a fairly small country when it comes to number of people, 25.7 million. Uh, but we do have a fairly large number of students on the just under 4 million. So it's a fairly, uh, you know, I would say uh, also a very diverse economy from a demographic standpoint with immigration making a large part of population growth. We have about 9,500 schools in the country, which obviously got us excited into this opportunity uh, given the demand that we would expect from this uh, demographics. If you go to the next slide, uh, this is just a timeline of our journey uh, till date. Uh, we initially became master franchisers for two states in Australia, namely New South Wales and Australian Capital Territory. That happened in July 2018. We opened our very first center in Sydney uh, in Jan 2019, the first year. Uh, then obviously we are looking to open a second center in Feb of 2020, which we had to delay the situation. We were able to still open it also in Sydney in July 2020. The same month, we also signed a very first franchisee uh, also in Sydney, a place called Marubra. In August, we onboarded a second franchisee in Sydney. In October, our first franchisee in Marubra opened their center in October last year. Uh, we also took the opportunity, both given the demand that we saw, but also the uh, reception from the Australians and how they had taken, uh, given a very positive review to Mathnesium brand and the way we teach, gave us the confidence to actually took the, take the rights for the entire country. That happened in October last year. And as we speak, uh, we have signed our third franchisee in Canberra. And we're looking, obviously, as we think of uh, balance of this year, we have fairly aggressive plans to grow the network, both in Sydney, but also across multiple cities in Australia, such as Brisbane, Adelaide, Melbourne, and so forth. So that has been a journey so far. Perfect. So, so thanks for the introduction, uh, guys. Um, we're really happy that you were able to join us uh, today uh, as you know, the potential franchisees, um, when they're looking at a, a brand like Mathnasium, they often don't get to get any information from another franchisee. So it's a different perspective. Um, so I, I'd like to thank you in advance very much for joining us and for that little introduction. So now it's time to put everybody on the spot. And uh, I think we'll, we'll start with Bill. Um, Bill, I've got some questions, uh, typical ones that uh, a new potential franchisee from around the region might have. Um, so let's uh, get started. You know, the fir my first question really is obviously over the years, um, Mathnasium has become one of the world's leading math education franchises. So nobody can dispute that. But what are the factors that you really think contributed to that success? Well, I think you could cover it really in three, three really solid points, which I believe makes Mathnasium stand out much more than any other of our competitors. The first thing is the way we teach math. It's a proprietary way that came from Larry, our founder, because of his son who was a math protege. And Larry was able to grasp how his son grasped learning math and thus in turn put it into a training program or into an educational program that allows other students to share in that knowledge and pick up that 
that ability to understand math like he did. And that's proven to be a very um, useful tool for helping students get better. The second thing is, is that we have a dedicated staff. Um, all of us in, in the company, regardless of where we reside in the world, have a deep, deep, um, um, how should I put this? We have a very deep, one, understanding of our product, but two, passion for teaching children. All of us support the main thing is the motto I talked about in my portion was changing children's lives through math. That's what we do. So from our support that comes um, in Asia from Hong Kong and um, to the people in Los Angeles and myself in Arizona, it's all about how do we help children. And the third one is a leadership team that is devoted to supporting all of us being able to do what we need to do to help children. But more importantly too, is let me add in Hamanchu, who's in Australia, what he does helps build our brand worldwide because people see the results of somebody who is a master franchisee and that the program does work when you use all the tools, you put everything in place and it happens. Yeah, that makes sense. And, and that's definitely uh, a lot of advantages that have uh, you know helped make you guys successful. So you have... Um, 11, more than 1,100 centers, five continents, uh, many different countries. How can this, this one single mass system work uh, across all of those different cultures, those different languages, um, those different maybe methodologies of, of learning? Well, there's a, a system and processes that we use that we know are proven and work. And so the first one we do when we bring on a new franchisee, and let's say we're going to a country where they don't speak English because... Our system, of course, was developed in English. Uh, we in, do what we call localization. And localization is really about understanding how math is taught in one particular country and some of the nuances that come. As an example, in Russia, they don't call them parentheses, they call them brackets, is what they define them as. So to a student who has been raised up learning math from the first grade in wouldn't mean a whole bunch to them. But seeing the word bracket, they automatically know. And so we're very proud of the localization work we do uh, to help our system meld in with the current curriculum. Everybody will agree that two plus three equals five. How you teach two plus three could be a whole different way. So we, we adapt to that. The other thing we do is we translate. We can't inspect every single country to be able to do everything in English because everybody doesn't speak English around the world. So any Western company needs to understand if you want to go into a country, you have to be able to translate all of your materials into um, the language that's spoken in the country. And that's what we do. It's a very long process, by the way. It's not as simple as people may think because it's 40,000 pages of materials plus pictures and everything that has to meld together. So we're very proud of when it's done, what it looks like and what can happen. But as an example, we've already translated languages. One of them is Chinese, uh, that we have the ability to teach Mathnasium in Chinese in China. So we're pretty excited about the opportunities as more countries. And then the last thing really is the people who do the training work that make us successful. When I look at our international team of Chris and Alex, who you know are out there every day working with our franchisees, working with our master franchisees, and helping them figure out all the things as a collaborative team on how to be successful. And that's the important part because we truly are all in this together. So those would be the three things that I would contribute to our success. Oh, good. And, and that's, um, you know, individual country customization, I think, makes sense, right. uh, you know, giving the variety of cultures uh, across our region. Uh, you know, another thing that I noticed right away when I looked at the Mathnasium concept is I, I just love your mission statement, you know, teach children math so they understand it, master it, and love it. You know, math was actually my best subject, but, I, you know, I can't say I ever mastered it or loved it. Um, how does how do you fulfill a mission statement like that? 
by the program and how we teach math. So math it can be to some of you, if you're one of the lucky students who you pick up math and you're good at it, it's great. Math is never a problem for you. You're never scared of it. But for some students, math can be quite intimidating. And as their peers begin to to start to fall behind and thus in turn become isolated. They feel, you know, oh boy, I'm stupid. You know, I'm not good enough, but that's not the case at all. Some students just require a little more work and a little more understanding. So for us, helping them use this proprietary program, which really teaches math a way that is amazing because I sure didn't know about it until I went through the, our training and saw, wow, that makes a lot of sense. Um, I never learned that in the third grade or the fourth grade, right? We everything all way. Um, what it does is as the students are, one, given the opportunity to understand where they're at and have a program and a path to help them become better, which is really important through our initial assessment. The second part is, is as they're beginning to master this and they're beginning to understand it, it's not about testing so they can regurgitate information to be able to be successful. It actually becomes part of what they do. But we also reward them with little prizes and everything that continue to reinforce that math is not something to be afraid of. It actually is something that can help them. And then once as their confidence begins to get stronger and stronger, you find less and less they're afraid of new things to go learn math. And that's what I think is a big piece of what helps. In Asia, uh, uh, as mentioned before, you're looking for master franchisees, similar to Hemanchu, and Ritika. So what exactly? But it gives the opportunity for the person who takes the country to one, operate centers, right? And, and operate their own and have the ability to teach and educate new franchisees, but then also a group of people to become franchisees, share one, the revenues and profitability of being a master franchisee from fee and royalties, but more importantly, the ability to grow their business network to help them achieve success. As Hamanchu showed, um, he's already got his third master, or his third sub franchisee beginning to work on the others. That's a great accomplishment in the time frame you're looking at and given COVID. So, you know, when you look at the, the double whammies of everything, the ability to grow your own network and your own business allows you the most, one of the most things I think so many people are looking for, financial freedom, but also the opportunity to be a leader of an enterprise. Yeah, I, you know, I have to agree. Um, and it is pretty impressive uh, what they've done since 2018. And, and we'll, we'll get into that a little bit later. So I think uh, the last question, and then I'm going to ask them a few questions is, you know, what are you really looking for in a franchisee in terms of their uh, capabilities, their experience, their capital, you know? Well, the biggest thing we're looking for is you have to have capital to be able to grow and, and open up your first center. So, you know, capital is one of the things that you need to have. So we're looking for some net worth and, and liquid numbers uh, for people to be able to get started. In terms of the type of franchisee we're looking for, having them come from a past education is a definite bonus. I think everybody would agree that they understand education, but the nice thing about it is our training programs also teach them how to do that. The one biggest thing that we find that makes people very successful. It's a passion for educating children and a passion for teaching. And when you have that ability and you have that passion to want to help children, the math part we can teach you how to how to 
how to get students, how to build the right sites, where to go, how to support you on an ongoing um, basis with our uh, operations leader in Asia, Chris. That we can help you with, and we've got all the tools and necessary things to make you successful. What we can't teach you and what no man will ever teach you is the passion and drive to want to do it. So that's the important part, okay? So that's what we look at the key critical things that any master franchisee uh, should have and wants to go out and change children's lives and has a passion for children. By the way, that's a picture of Chris, our operations expert in Asia. There he is in real. <laughs> Thanks also for joining us, Chris. So uh, th thank you, Bill, for, for answering those questions. I, I think uh, we'll come back and ask you a few more in a second, sure. but I'll give you, I'll give you a break. Uh, Himanshu, Rutika, um, again, thanks for joining us. I'm going to hit you with the toughest question right off the bat before, you know, you get tired or distracted. You know, you guys started in 2018, um, you know, as a master franchisee, only a year or so into it. Can you tell me uh, some of the challenges you faced in the last 12 months uh, and really how your company has been able to continue to grow in 2020, which was a, a year where, you know, not many not many companies managed to do that. Right. So, I mean, you know, as you saw the timeline, we started uh, our first center in Jan 2019. And through the, throughout that year, I think we had fairly good success. And we can attribute the success to a few things. One is, uh, you know, as Bill and everybody has mentioned, the magnesium method. I think it's certainly very strong and it resonated with the parents in Australia and Sydney as well. So, you know, once our, our hurdle was to get people into the door, into the center, but once they got in and they took the assessment, they very quickly saw the value that magnesium can bring to their child. And it was a very transparent process and they could see the systems behind it. So I think that uh, systems in place, the process, the method, helped us get to a very strong start early on. And then 2019, we did really quite well. To the extent that, as I was saying earlier, we were looking to open a second center in Q1 of 2020. Obviously, we know that COVID hit, which obviously had, you know, in the very short term, when it hit was a, you know, more of a concern as for everyone else. But I must say that that's where we also learned about the resilience of the model and about the organization as well. Uh, in literally three days, and I recall the exact date, which is between March 23rd and March 27th, we had to close our center and move every single child to an online platform. Now, over those three days, we not only had to train our instructors, had to train our parents to be able to access the online platform, train our, our students to use that platform, and then not only do that, but be successful on that. And we got a lot of support, uh, and I would say a lot of hand-holding by Chris, Chris in Hong Kong, but also the Magnesium technology team and anybody we, uh, who could help us out by ensuring that we had the right servers in place, in the right geographic location, the server downtime were managed according to Australian time zones. Uh, you know, there were a lot of training available to us as well. And I think, again, being able to do that in a matter of three to four days gave our parents the confidence that this organization, this institute will not run away. Unlike a lot of the places which closed down, we continue to operate. So I think that gave us, uh, you know, us and a lot of our parents, but I would say importantly, also franchisee candidates, the confidence in the organization and the system. Because when they saw and they were looking for opportunities in the education field, more specifically, we were possibly one of the very few ones out there still operating. And not only doing that, but also actually growing at the same time. So I think that the reason why we were able to land our first franchisee in July, literally in the middle of COVID situation. Um, so I think I would say, you know, that was challenging times, but the way we look at it, every challenge brings opportunities. And I thought that actually, if anything else, created new opportunities for us. Well, I'm, I'm glad that you uh, both survived 2020 and actually uh, grew uh, and, it, and that it all worked out for you. And of course, it's from the great part of it is your own ingenuity and entrepreneurship, but uh, the support also from Magnesium uh, brand team. Um, 
ignoring that, but let, let's go back just a little bit before that. You started in January uh, 2019 for Center. How long did it take for you know Center to really stabilize, get all those initial problems you know over with, and begin to kind of run smoothly? Yeah, I mean, I think you know Bill had shown an image of a typical magnesium center. And I think, you know, in addition to the signage, one thing which is quite unique about magnesium is the location of the center itself. It is typically located in a high-end, you know, retail environment, very visible. So we made sure that our very first center is in a location which is visible, easily accessible, and parents just naturally see it. A lot of glass windows, a lot of great signage. We have mass problem, you know, written on the windows, which attracts and intrigues passerbys. So when we opened, we just had a lot of people intrigued and interested and curious to see what is this thing which is out there, walking in and just inquiring as to what's happening. And through that process, I think we were able to scale up. So we didn't really see any challenges, to be very honest, uh, on that front, in terms of being able to get prospective parents walk in. And then once they walked in, we offered free assessments. They said, hey, why don't you bring a child? All we need is a 90 minutes of your time and you will have a really good assessment for your child done and you know exactly where your child stands. So I think that process helped us a lot. Uh, so I would say in terms of challenges, we didn't really face any. Maybe the only thing could be, you know, the brand is new to the market, Australia. But again, as Bill highlighted, you know, maths is maths. So as long as, you know, we could convey that it aligns to the local curriculum, it has been localized from the language standpoint, uh, I think a lot of our parents were very comfortable with that. Well, that's great that it didn't take uh, very long. Um, you know, speaking of the brand, how did you really position the brand in the market? Because obviously there's competitors there. Um, so how did you, you know, place Mathnasium? Yeah, so, you know, there are a few. Um, so one of the questions we get all the time from a lot of our parents is, you only teach maths, whereas everybody is teaching maths and English and other topics as well. And our response to that typically is, well, if you have a broken bone, you don't go to a general practitioner, you go to an orthopedic surgeon. So what we say is that, you know, we are a maths expert. And what we are catering to is the maths need of a child. And I think increasingly, everybody understands the value of maths as a topic in the context of the subjects. So what they realize is, and increasingly, we are finding that parents understand that if a child is not confident in maths, the lack of confidence percolates into other subjects as well. So I think that part we emphasize very heavily on. Second is, uh, you know, again, I think the assessment process is very robust. When the assessment is done and the results are out, uh, a lot of parents actually, this is the first time they realize their child's strength and weaknesses. They may be aware of that, but it has never been quantified for them in this manner. That I think resonates with them really well as well. So I think, you know, combination of these things is what helped us differentiate. Also, I would say is, um, you know, we have a flexible drop-in model, which a lot of parents love because they don't have to make sure they get their child at 4 p.m. when they're rushing in traffic. They can come at 4.15, they can come at 3.15, whatever works for them, um, which actually helps them arrange their time more effectively as well. Uh, we don't give homework, which a lot of parents love because the last thing they want to do is deal with the homework at home. We think we will take care of that. So I think, you know, there are a lot of attributes which, uh, which work with parents, especially parents who are working, um, but at the same time, uh, I think the other differentiating factor is a lot of time parents have to push their child into a treating institute. The environment which Mathnesium creates is of a pull environment, which is a child wants to go and they're pulling their parents into it, which is a massive win for the parent. Yeah, for sure that is. Um, you know, I, I think uh, Mathnasium has a lot of unique advantages over its competitors um, and you've highlighted some of those. Um, but look, looking at it from a, a parent's perspective now, let's let, let's look at our consumer, which is really the parents. You know, who who should study math, and and why should they send their children to Mathnasium? You know, as opposed to somewhere else. I, I think everybody needs to study math in today's life, right? Um, the way uh, I mean, math has always been a critical subject. I think it has become, and actually we think, and uh, is that it become even more important, specifically the way the technology being developed, the skill sets required in the future, uh, and the demand that our kids will face over the next several years and decades. 
So I think, you know, uh, in terms of the market, it's every single child out there, right, has to have basic skills in maths to the extent, right? And what we find is, uh, you know, a lot of uh, children are actually quite behind. Often they're not aware of that and neither are parents aware of it. A lot of parents also lack the ability uh, to be able to teach their child, not necessarily because they don't know maths, but because that the way they've learned maths has evolved since then. So while a parent may be very good in maths themselves, they're able to teach their child so that it's consistent with what's being learned in school is not always there. So I think to your question, everybody has to learn maths in my mind, right? Uh, it's, a, it's a topic which they, they, they can't ignore and increasingly it's going to increase more and more fundamentals to learning. Yeah, I, I have to agree that as we move to, you know, more and more technological society, uh, math just becomes more and more important. Thank you very much. Um, you know, Bill, I'm going to toss a few more questions at you, if you don't mind. Um, you know, one of the questions that we get asked by investors um, really revolves around the issue of the initial and then the ongoing support uh, that you provide to your franchisees. So. Mm -hmm. You know, let's let's do the initial first. What what is your initial support uh, look like to uh, to someone, let's say, who's taken a new country? There are no mathnasiums there yet. So part of uh, the big thing we do is I'll take it from the point that we go through a discovery day where they have an opportunity to meet people within the company. It used to be done in Los Angeles. Unfortunately, everything's virtual now uh, for the time being, and I think for the foreseeable future but they have the opportunity to meet the people that support them and have an opportunity to meet with our head of our marketing, uh, meet with the head of our operations, uh, the EVP of operations, and really get a basic understanding of who the support people are from the leadership level. And then as we sign uh, the agreements, that's when um, we have a group of people on the international side, they go to work. Chris is one of them. He's got a team that works with with him and uh, we start localization if there's translation that's required we begin the process of starting the translation but more importantly we begin the training program for the these particular master franchisees or um, you know the country franchisees and they can start to go through learning how to one open up their first center but more importantly how to begin to look for real estate how to begin to market the brand because every country you go into you're new it, it, you know, that's never going to change. And so it's just a matter of the, the grand opening plans and the plans you make to open up your center, where you're going to locate that center, all the materials, everything that needs to be accomplished, where Chris and his team come into play. And then, of course, Chris knows he's got the support of our leader and everybody else in the organization from IT, from uh, marketing managers and everybody that can help support him. And then the localization part is uh, handled by uh, one of our great team members who's based in the UK. And she in turn goes ahead and begins the localization factor of working with the, the new master franchisee to begin to localize our particular mathnasium uh, educational platform. Now we don't change dramatic things, right? What we do is change things like I talked about parentheses, periods, dots, and things along that nature to make sure that we've got a consistent way we go about. But that's what we do from the beginning is doing everything we can to successfully set up our master franchisee for success. Well, that's, yeah. uh, that's great and sounds like quite an extensive support. Now let's skip forward uh, you know, two or three or four centers or a couple of years, you know, how are, how do you continue to support? Well, we, what we do is we have ongoing training. Chris and his team actually visit the country on a yearly basis, uh, continue to always be there to give suggestions, look at the program, talk about new marketing ideas, new student retention ideas, different various things that, how Manchu and any master franchisee are going to face on an ongoing basis, um, you know, because the business will continue to see some of some systemic stuff that, you know, we continue to work on. But more importantly, if there's new things that are being brought out, or there's a new way of teaching we may be looking at or something along that lines, 
we go ahead and, and of course, Chris gets actively involved in making sure that training is rolled out across all of our international franchisees. Now, in the case of what Amantu went through and in three days being able to turn around a in-classroom to a mathnasium at home or a virtual environment took, you know, when you look at talking about support, the amount of work that people in Los Angeles, along with Chris and the team and the entire international put into to make sure that people were down as little as amount as possible and had the opportunity to continue their enterprise and running it. So thus in turn, considering the fact of what COVID has done worldwide, um, you know, the ability to still be in business, which is unfortunately for a lot of businesses, we can't say that. So we're very proud of the support we give to every international franchisee from our international team. Yeah, I have to say that that uh, was a pretty impressive feat and uh, I'm glad you guys were able to, to pull it off uh, for your franchisees and your master franchisees. So um, I, I think that really is the biggest challenge in 2020. Um, and you've, you've shown that the, the, the brand can actually overcome it. Uh, so I think that gives franchisees a lot of confidence, you know, in the support that you'll provide. Um, now let's look, what about this year? Let's look, look into 2021. Uh, we've just entered it. You know, what's happening kind of globally? Um, you know, what are your plans uh, as a brand for this year? So I think the big thing for us is we continue to uh, grow our footprint around the world. And we, that's what we're currently doing. So we're currently in discussion with the, some uh, countries that are strategically placed different places in the world and hopefully being able to bring them into the Mathnasian family and help them get the benefit in, um, of, of our great programs and our, and our proprietary way of teaching children so that we can begin to impact children's lives in different countries around the world. In terms of the COVID, none of us know. It, you know, I wish uh, all of us had a crystal ball. We don't. So right now we're really measured on is what we hope is that each country, I think, is taking uh, aggressive steps to try and address individual COVID issues. But I, you know, will we still be facing COVID in 2021? Yes, I, I, I believe we will. And I think it'll go on at least through the third quarter. However, we are seeing progress. We are seeing changes. We are seeing things starting to improve in most countries in the world. And what we continue to do is to be able to be one, adaptive, but two, have the ability to what I call move to the right or move to the left when necessary so that we can continue to one, support our existing franchisees, which is very important, but more importantly, making sure that any new master franchisee we bring on board has the same ability to be able to move to the right and move to the left when warranted. And we're very proud of the progress we've made in doing that. So um, we'll in, we, I would like to be able to and think we can increase our footprint around the world by six additional countries this year. We're really excited about that. And, and we hope to be able to help you do that. So maybe some people on this call will, will be part of that expansion. We would love it. Um, any interesting news recently that uh, you have that maybe you could share about uh, anything in the last six months to a year? Well, um, we do have Singapore is, uh, coming online here. Um, I think will happen. Chris, just give me a thumbs up or thing. April, right? April. So Singapore will open up in April. We continue to grow in the UK. Of course, Montu is off to great, great strides and steps. And um, we've been able to um, you know, help him wherever we can. And um, we're really excited about that. And then the other exciting news is that uh, we have a new CEO who uh, used to be our COO. And our um, old CEO actually is part of the board now. So we've established um, uh, the right leadership in place, and but more importantly, the right support mechanisms in place that will allow the company to continue to prosper and grow for the foreseeable future. No, that sounds uh, that sounds great. So, 
Uh, last question, any final thoughts um, <clears throat> you might want to share with our viewers? Um, any advice to, to somebody who's listening who might be considering, you know, the Mathnasium um, brand for their country or territory? Sure. I think <clears throat> if I wanted to impress anything on everybody who's listening and, and is considering Mathnasium, you know, I would ask you to, to put this into your thought and, and decision process. One, you're going with the company that has world global experience, but more importantly, over a thousand centers. So we know how to go about growing the business. We know how to support our franchisees, which is very critical because not all brands can say that. Secondarily, the ability to one, have the exclusive development rights as a master franchisees for a country um, is not something granted very often, especially from Western brands. That's not a typical maneuver. But more importantly, get all the training, support, leadership, and uh, the ability to have programs that help you be successful. And again, as you become more successful, uh, that allows us to also be successful. And we're very big in our company about being into win-win. And then the last thing for me is um, understand that our mission is to really change children's lives through math. And I would love to have people who have that passion and want uh, to come and uh, absolutely ask any questions, learn about us, because I think you will find it'll not only make a difference in children's lives, it could also make a big change in your life. I, I no, I That's agree, it. thanks. Sorry, I, I'm having trouble with my mic. Um, so thanks, uh, thanks, Bill. Um, and uh, thanks as well for joining us, uh, you know, in the PM over there in the US. Uh, Hamanchu, uh, Ratika, a couple last questions for you guys. You know, I, I asked, uh, Bill, so from a franchisor perspective, we got the answer, but uh, how did you view the franchise support that they gave you? Uh, let's start at the very beginning. When you, when you first started this process, um, anything you can share with us about your feelings or, or what really happened? Yeah, so, you know, um, this is my background and what I think I will have done briefly, we have had a lot of exposure to very large corporates. Right, so the benefit of a large corporate is they have very well-defined systems and processes. But the downside of a large corporate could be the inbuilt hierarchy and bureaucracies. Right, so when we started engaging with Mathnasium, what we found was a fairly uh, interesting and uh, I would say a balanced approach whereby the systems and processes were very well-defined, which are the typical, what you see in large organization, which I think gave us a lot of comfort that again, there are systems in place, process in place, Chris in Hong Kong out there and his team over there so that we won't be left alone. There'll be somebody behind us helping us out. At the same time, it's still small enough and I would say close enough to not have those bureaucracies and hierarchies which can sometimes time you know, growth and so forth, which means that we have access to the relevant teams when we need them, right? Uh, more than often, you know, when I write an email to Chris, uh, I usually get it response back even when I checked again. So I, th I think the, the response time, how they react to a situation, their understanding, their empathy, I think uh, collectively uh, was very, very good. I mean, so I, I would say that, you know, uh, that, that what got us excited and actually uh, to a large part convinced about this opportunity in Australia through Mathnasium. Uh, so I would say the support, uh, at least for, for us has been unparalleled and exactly what we was looking for, which is a good balance between well-defined processes, but also accessibility that you work on. No, good. And then what about, you know, an ongoing basis? So, you know, they had a great support at the beginning for you uh, and it worked. So, you know, what they did worked and it helped you guys be successful. Uh, now you're a couple years into, you know, the brand. You understand it already. You're, you're operating, your teams are going. Uh, you know, how do they continue to support you? Yeah, I mean, you know, the, the level of support that we require is obviously evolving and the nature of support is also changing, right? So obviously early on, we needed support on every single thing, be it education, be it how to do the stickers, everything pretty much, right? 
Now, obviously, we have some experience there. Our support now that we require is more on how do we manage a franchise? How do we ensure that our franchise that we are support we are getting from, from master from Matthew, for example, right? So again, uh, as I said, having Chris in this region and his team, who then in turn connects with the HQ uh, in Los Angeles or with Tanika in UK, uh, ensure that there is a seamlessness of that information flowing through as and when we need it. So I'm, I mean, I have to say at least till date, we have never had, uh, it has never happened that when we had wanted something, be it in terms of insight from other markets or how to do certain things or any question we may have that we don't get response in, uh, you know, within 24 hours, uh, literally. And sometimes I even wonder, does Chris ever sleep or does he even actually go on vacation? Which clearly I'm sure he does, but it doesn't feel like to us. <laughs> wow. Uh, Chris, if you're ever looking for a job, you know, give me a call, right? <laughs> okay, no, that's great uh, that uh, they gave you great uh, ongoing support as well. Um, so what would you, uh, you know, advise to someone who is listening to this uh, webinar who might be uh, interested in taking the Mathnasium brand for their country? Any advice, any suggestions? Um, you know, what's your feeling? You've you're, you're well into the process, you, you took the jump. Um, you know, what can you share with our listeners? Yeah, I, I, I'll say, you know, I think the passion is paramount here because if somebody is not passionate about education, about helping children, uh, I think it'll be hard to be successful. Not because the model is not good, not because the process or not there, it's because, you know, end of the day, this is a very relationship -built type of business where you're building a relationship with the children and the parents. Right. Uh, so if somebody's not passionate about that, it's going to be extremely hard to, you, I mean, I guess you can do one center, but to be able to grow into multi-center opportunity is going to be hard to do so. So I think to me and to Ratika, one thing, and we have discussed this quite often, which is one ingredient, which in our mind is super critical is having the passion for it. Uh, second piece is actually not be afraid to ask an experiment, right? Because um, you know, uh, the good thing about Mathnasium is the content is very exhaustive, it's very robust, right? Uh, I mean, there's everything out there. And, but then, you know, not be afraid to ask questions, not being afraid to seek support. I think uh, often what we see is that people are, people think that I'll do it myself, let me try it out, and then I'll ask if I need help, which is fine. But often, you know, because Mathnasium has so much experience in running, uh, you know, 1000 uh, percent they have pretty much seen every single scenario, right? So it has always happened that if you come across any issue or anything, they always have seen, if Chris may not have seen this, somebody in HQ has seen it in some form. So, you know, while we're trying to figure out in parallel, we always make sure that we go and ask them and say, have you guys come across this? And if so, what did you learn and what was your insight? So as, you know, being able to ask that question and never be afraid to do so, not be shy about it. I think I would say the second thing. Uh, the third thing is, uh, you know, really trust the brand. Right. Initially, what happens is when you're opening a new country, there is a feeling that oh, this country offers in this particular manner, maths is different or it's taught differently. You know, how come this US model work here and so forth? We had the same apprehensions early on. Right. But end of the day, what we realize is maths is maths. You know, children are children, parents are parents. Right. As long as the localization is done, the system works. Right. So there is an issue that happens, but trust in it, uh, I think, is, is our learning as well. Yeah, I think uh, that's a challenge. We've been franchising a lot of different brands for a lot of time and all, all, always the franchisee thinks or, or whatever, and it is unique. I mean, everywhere is unique, but you're right. Math is math. When it foundationally, children are children, parents are parents. So, you know, 20 countries or whatever, and 1,100 centers, and it worked in Australia. So I know it will also work in, in Vietnam and in Thailand and in Indonesia, Philippines, um, in, in a lot of the countries that we have viewers or listeners uh, on this call. So thank you. Any, you know, one of you want to say to conclude? No, I mean, I would say that I think it's a great opportunity. The very fact, you know, we started with two states, uh, but now we've taken the entire country. I think it's a testimony to the fact that we trust the brand. We believe in the demand and the opportunity and success I think this, this can have. I mean, pandemic 
COVID what we've gone through has shown that two industries which have continued to do well, medicine and education, right? So to us, this is from a commercial standpoint, I think I think this is a, we think it's a no-brainer. Uh, if you're passionate about it, it's a no-brainer. Math, uh, you know, as a topic, it's, it's I think it's going to continue to be in a lot of demand. So I would say that, you know, if you're passionate, definitely give it a shot. Great, thanks, um, and thanks uh, as well for joining us. Um, I think we'll take uh, we'll end our prepared questions there. Uh, we'll take a one minute break and and watch our final video. Critical care, especially, has to do with physics, chemistry, and that's all math related. The first time I heard about Mathnasium, I was 16 years old. I got a C that quarter in geometry and algebra too. I was not a confident young man. I doubted myself constantly. When he doing homework, he always have struggle and he said, Mom, I need help. I think I pretty much saw his potential the day I met him. Judy was uh, very patient with me. She took the time, she cared. I just remember the excitement he got about getting a really hard problem right. <laughs> yeah, sometimes, oh, <laughs> that means he understands. The aha moments that every teacher looks for. Mathnasium helped me get the grades that I needed. A's in both geometry and algebra too. It gave me the confidence to go as far as I could go. Now he looks at the future as full of hope and good things. Going to Mathnasium gave me a drive to do better. It continues to do that today as I save lives. Mathnasium, changing lives through math. So that's a, that's a nice uh, experience. Um, we, we've got some questions and I think we've got a, yeah, we'll take a, maybe another five or 10 minutes and then we'll conclude. Um, I think a couple questions that we have uh, are for Bill. They're really about the financial side. Um, we've got a question about what, what are the franchise and the royalty fees? Now, obviously, this is going to vary a lot by, uh, you know, country and territory, but, you know, what can you tell uh, people in general about the, you know, fee structure? Well, the fee structure is pretty straight. For your own centers, um, the standard royalty rate is, is 6%. And then depending, um, you know, the franchise fee for to operate your center uh, can vary um, anywhere from uh, thirty to 40000 depending. Um, in terms of sub-franchising, we've set that up where there's a split um, with um, the master and us, and the royalties are split with the master and us. Um, I assume the other question that you probably got is, what is the ROI or what's the return on investment? <laughs> it's yep. always the question that comes. <clears throat> that is going to vary by company because the one thing we can't control is rent. And as we know, in, in, in a lot of countries, rent um, is very expensive. So what we do provide to you is the opportunity to do a performa. And through our conversation and approval process, there actually is one part where we go through one methodology and, and the opportunity to learn about what Mathnasium is. And then we also go through numbers and we're happy to take you through those at that particular point. Uh, signed and my lawyer would kill me if I did, was started revealing certain numbers. So by all means, we want, we will share them at the appropriate time. But then we also allow you to build a performer to see how it does for you personally in your particular country, because every country in that regard is uniquely different because real estate in Japan is significantly more expensive than it is, let's say in um, Malaysia. So. Um, at that you know, point, we'll work you through it. But again, Chris has got great skills in this to be able to you know, help you with that. And of course, I can do the same and, and our leader, Jennifer, can do the same also. So um, we're more than happy to help um, everybody understand how the enterprise makes numbers um, and makes uh, profitability. But I can say coming from my past and in the years I spent in the food industry, Restaurants would kill to have the margins we have. Yeah, that's that's for sure. And and just to be clear, uh, you know, we were talking about return on investment and projections. The you guys will walk the and, and assist any potential franchisee to come up with their own numbers prior to them making a, an actual commitment. 
absolutely invest in the brand. Okay, absolutely. So, yeah, so I, I think that's uh, kind of covers that one. What about center costs? Um, you know, what did what does it cost to build a traditional center? Maybe that that very first one, which we know needs to be at least a medium or high profile location. What what kind well, of can, ranges do you see? I can speak in general, but I'm going to refer right now to Ratika because she's opened up centers in Australia. And so Ratika, if you've got an opportunity and talk about what it took for you to open up your first center in Australia, that would be great if you guys don't mind. Yeah, I mean, I, I can talk to the numbers there. Um, okay, great. Yeah, so, you know, again, I think as you mentioned, rent is a big factor there, but in terms of the center itself, it's a fairly, you know, mathematician centers are fairly low cost built out because we don't use any technology. We largely use paper pencil for teaching. Uh, oh, okay. So, uh, and also all, all of our, our equipment is IKEA from a furniture standpoint as a global standard. Great, isn't it? <laughs> right. So to, to fit out a particular location, uh, I think at least in Australia, I can talk about it. It ranges from, uh, you know, about 25,000 USD to 50,000 USD. That's the range we are seeing. Uh, really, uh, the driving factor between that range is really building a toilet. Uh, effectively, right. when you build one, otherwise, uh, you know, it's a fairly simple fit out: it's carpet tiles, paint, some lighting. And that's about it. Yeah, and I'll add to that. So the reason why is because you've actually built them, right? And I've got examples spread across five continents and in the U.S. So the build out for us is 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 amount to one of the things we get our furniture from IKEA which is a very one durable furniture because you need that when you're dealing with children um, because they, they can be rough on equipment. But more importantly is, is it's inexpensive. So when you're looking at Ikea as a whole, as our fit out, and then you've got signage and then you've got some whiteboards, um, which are typically not very expensive. Um, the, the changing factor of what I see is people who add computers versus people who don't. That's totally a center's choice to do, right? But uh, some places like it. And um, for Mathnasium at home, you're going to need a computer, so it's not going to change. Um, but you're right. It's typically between what I find is uh, 40 and 60,000 USD to build out a center. And that includes everything, all in FF and E. Right. Okay. I think that's good. I, you know, I want to leave us on uh, one final question and I'll, I'll ask both of you. Uh, and it was typed in by Jessica, you know, how are the learning centers doing uh, now? So we are in the middle of COVID. Uh, you have uh, adjusted so that teaching can be done online. Um, you know, but how are the centers really doing? And does it make logical sense uh, for somebody to look to invest now, even during this period. Um, Bill, maybe you first and, and then I'll, I'll hit. You know what, I'm going to let Hermanchu uh, open and answer okay. this question first, and then I'll, I'll, I'll end up. Hermanchu? Yeah, sure. Um, so I think as I referenced earlier, we have uh, three centers open in Australia now. Um, the first one, which opened in Jan 2019, it obviously had a bit of a dip in, um, I think from April through July last year, about three, four months. And when I say dip is mainly because parents were a bit more cautious, uh, whereby they didn't want to send the child to the center, which we were also closed for two months, but also there was a lot of um, uh, fatigue of online learning in general, because everybody was going online for schooling as well. So, so I think except for those three months, and then we started picking up back again from August last year. So right now where we stand for the particular center, it's, at, it's a stage which is higher than what we entered COVID with in terms of our revenue as well as number of kids. Our second center started in July last year, which is actually in the middle of COVID. And that has grown quite, actually that has grown faster than what our first center grew in 2019. Wow. On, on basis, both from a revenue and number of enrollment standpoint. And a third center which opened in October last year, so again, been there for only three months. Uh, they are on the right trajectory as well as our second center. So um, I, I think I think partly because also Australia has been a bit more insulated, uh, you know, in terms of number of infections and so forth. So things have been largely open. That has helped us a lot. Uh, and I think people have been just uh, open to going out. So, but that said, you know, except for those three four months, we have been largely able to manage quite effectively. 
that's that's amazing. So my hats off to you. Um, congratulations for managing that situation and continuing to to grow. It's very, I think, encouraging to hear that your center one, you know, has managed to go over pre-COVID numbers uh, already. So that's that's quite impressive. So good job, guys. Um, Bill, anything you can add to that? Well, I can give it from a, a little bit more of a global perspective. We've gone through gyrations of various degrees around the world. Uh, we have some countries that have been open and closed, I think four or five times. And it's you know proven to be very challenging for us to be able to keep that consistently uh, consistent level um, for our students. But when I look at the biggest one, you know, when I look at what we can do, um, I look at you know what did happen in the United States. We went through the initial part, had to close down. Like a mantra, we had to launch Mathnasium at home. <clears throat> and uh, you know, did we have a drop off in students? Yeah, because parents were trying to figure out, you know, how do I do this now that I'm not working and I'm at home with my kids? How do we manage this? How do we do this? How do we make technology work? Because you know those kind of things all presented problems. But more importantly, as we, we began to work in the first three months of this, what we found is that our retention um, actually started to go up from the virtual standpoint. And at that particular piece, we were keeping students, um, at least online, not at 100%, because that was impossible in everywhere we do business around the world. However, what we did find is as centers began to reopen, students automatically clamored back to going back to centers. So what we find is that Mathnasium at home is a great supplemental tool to help educate learning is that parents um, still want their children to be in centers and being educated by teachers one-on-one. -on -one. And, and they believe in that. And we, we want to be able to support that wherever we can. Um, you know, right now, uh, how we adapt it, we got some places in the world, we're still struggling with governments and what's going on in their particular countries. But for the most part, we are really have, um, been able to get back to ourselves on a trajectory that getting full center enrollments is, is in a good place. That's great. So on behalf of the VF Franchise Consulting Team, everyone, uh, and all of our listeners, uh, we'd like to thank uh, Mr. Bill Schreiber, as well as Mr. Hamanshu and Ms. Ratika uh, for joining us today, for sharing the great information about the, this amazing brand. Uh, for everybody who's listening, we will be sending out a follow-up email to you. Uh, we'll have a link to this webinar so you can you know, watch it again to review. Uh, please respond to the email with any questions you might have, uh, as well as what territory you might be interested in. And we'll be happy to supply you with some more specific information for your market. Uh, for those who want to proceed to the next step, uh, we'll collect an NDA and a small information form, uh, and then arrange for a private call with the Mathnasium Business Development Team uh, to really help you through and give you the information that you know, you need to make an educated decision on, on whether this brand is right for you. We know Mathnasium works. We know that uh, many uh, 1,100 successful uh, centers worldwide. So we're very confident uh, that it can be successful in your territory as well. So thank you all for joining us. Uh, thanks to our panelists. Everybody have a great day. Um, and thank you again.